On August 26, Google officially released its latest editing model, codenamed Nano Banana. In this video, I'll explore how to use it, its capabilities, and whether it could spell the end for image editing apps like Adobe Photoshop. For clarity, Nano Banana is the code name for the model, officially named Gemini 2.5 Flash Image. As you can see here, it debuted at number one on Image Arena, a benchmarking platform for image generation and editing models. Its launch was interestingly unannounced, and this sparked widespread curiosity due to its remarkable editing results. You can see here that it scored 1,362, which is 171 points higher than its nearest competitor, which indicates a strong community preference for its edits. In addition, it was free, which fueled even more interest. So that's a little overview about Nano Banana. Next, let's demonstrate it in action to understand what the hype is all about. To appreciate its strengths, let's compare it to Photoshop by editing a few images. In this first test, I'll replace a sky in Photoshop. I'll use the Object Select tool to select the sky. I'll click Fill. Then input a prompt. After a few clicks, the sky is changed. Now for a tougher task, making this portrait face the camera. I'll select the subject. I'll type the prompt face forward and generate the edit. And as you can see, the result shows a forward facing portrait. Unfortunately though, it doesn't resemble at all the original subject, which makes this a total failure. Now let's try Nano Banana using Google AI Studio. This is a platform for experimenting with Gemini models. Alternatively, you can also use the Gemini app, which was integrated with Nano Banana this past August 26. The process is incredibly simple, no buttons to click or selections to make. You just describe what you want. I'll upload the image. I'll type make the person face forward. And just like that, it's done. Now if you're not impressed by this result, let me highlight what makes this stand out. There are two key factors. The first is character consistency. The generated face and hair closely matches the original, maintaining the subject's unique features. Unlike Photoshop's Firefly model or other tools, Nano Banana delivers results that feel true to the source image. The second standout feature is simplicity. Nano Banana interpreted the complex prompts with remarkable accuracy, often nailing it on the first try while preserving the scene's context. So that's a quick demo of how you use Nano Banana. Next, let's run through some various editing tasks. Most of these were done with just one prompt. The first editing task is to change the pose or orientation. As you've seen earlier, Nano Banana can adjust a person's pose or orientation with seamless consistency. Here is another example. I'll prompt to have the person face the camera. And as you can see, the result looks flawless. The second editing task you can do is adjust colors. You can use Nano Banana to colorize an image. For this prompt, I ask that the image be given natural colors. You can also use Nano Banana to fix colors. In this case, I ask Nano Banana to adjust the colors for natural lighting. The third editing task you can do is to replace a sky. This is a pretty core task in photo editing, and you would normally have to use some special sky masking tools to get this done. Well, not so with Nano Banana. All you need to do is to type a prompt, like change a sky to a stormy twilight with lightning, and as you can see, it handles the task effortlessly. The fourth editing task that it can do is replace a background. This is another frequently performed task in photo editing. As you can see, Nano Banana excels at background replacement, handling complex elements like hair with no problem at all. The fifth editing task you can do is adjust shot distance. I prompted Nano Banana to move a portrait further from the camera, and the result was perfect. The sixth editing task is to add text. You can ask Nano Banana to add specific text in a particular font. In this case, I asked it also to center it on a golden hour sky. 
and it delivered. The seventh editing task is to replace and remove objects. In this example, I ask Nano Banana to replace the headdress, outfit, and sunflower with a cap, yellow shirt, and rose, respectively. I added the Starbucks logo to the shirt later, in a second prompt. Nano Banana also excels at removing complex objects, similar to the fancy Remove tools of Photoshop or Lightroom, but without any selections or masking. The eighth editing task is Image Fusion. In this case, I uploaded two images, one of a woman, in an image of two dogs, I then prompted Nano Banana to output a woman walking a dog on a beach at sunset. And this is the result. As you can see, it preserved the likeness of both subjects perfectly. In this second example, I uploaded three images, a girl, a hat, and sunglasses, and I prompted Nano Banana to have the girl wear the hat and sunglasses. And again, perfect consistency. The ninth editing task is Smart Image Mixing. For a creative edit, I prompted Nano Banana to create an image of the woman riding the dog. As you can see, it combined and transformed the elements into a cohesive imaginative output while maintaining the subject's likeness. And finally, the tenth editing task that you can do is Portrait Retouching. You can ask Nano Banana to remove blemishes, make a person smile, or even unhide a face with impressive accuracy, far easier than a dedicated portrait retouching tool. So those are some of the things that Nano Banana can do. I'm sure there are a lot more. So what was my experience editing with it? The best way to describe editing with Nano Banana is it is effortless. Effortless because it is extremely smart and rarely makes mistakes. And effortless because you don't need to learn any tools. So the next question you might ask is, which apps might be impacted? Nano Banana's capabilities could challenge several apps, particularly those targeting casual users. The first app that I think could be impacted is Adobe Photoshop Express. This app performs similar tasks as Nano Banana, except that it relies on manual tools, making it less efficient than Nano Banana's simple, fast approach for background replacement or object manipulation. Users might ditch Photoshop Express for Nano Banana. The second app that could be impacted is AI-powered image editors. Apps like Fodor, PixArt, and Pixlr, which offer AI-assisted editing, may lose users to Nano Banana's superior consistency, which is up to 95% character preservation and one-shot editing. Another app that could suffer are specialized apps. Apps like Photoroom, which does background replacement, Facetune, which does portrait retouching, and services which do image restoration or colorization often require individual subscriptions and they face competition from Nano Banana's overlapping capabilities. With Nano Banana, you get all these features under a single subscription, offering a more streamlined and cost effective solution. Next, what about the impact on Photoshop, Adobe's flagship app? Should Adobe be concerned? Well, if you follow the stock market, you know that Adobe's stock price has declined significantly in the past year over AI competition concerns. From a high of 587, it is now priced at just 357 as of this writing. So there are clearly concerns in the marketplace about Adobe's prospects. But is it warranted? Well, initially, I was skeptical. However, after using Nano Banana, my mind has changed. I believe Adobe should be concerned for two key reasons. First is outdated technology. Historically, switching from Photoshop to an alternative meant settling for lower quality or outdated tools, such as less precise AI masking or a lack of generative AI features. However, Nano Banana changes that. It's really the first alternative to offer cutting edge technology that makes Photoshop feel outdated, and you can get it at a lower price, challenging Adobe's dominance. The second reason is formidable competition. Tech giants like Google and OpenAI have the resources and motivation to advance conversational AI editing, potentially surpassing Nano Banana and further reducing reliance on Adobe's tools. As these competitors innovate, Adobe's subscription model may struggle to retain users seeking simpler cutting-edge solutions. So going forward, it'll be interesting to know whether Adobe will rise to the challenge. Only time will tell. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do check out Nano Banana in Google Gemini, 
or Google AI Studio and let me know your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree with anything I've said. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.